Hello everyone, I just uh, came from YouTube, I watched malware analysis for hedgehogs and uh, here uh, in this video that I watched, uh, Karsten he did, uh, just show you the video real quick here so it was malware analysis for hedgehogs uh, excellent channel by the way, if, uh, if you don't know it in this video, uh, Karsten, he did a really, really great job. Uh, okay, this is some commercial here. We're going to reject all. Okay, so in this video, Karsten, he uh, he took a look at Ghidra, Cutter, uh, Binary Ninja, and Ida Free. So he just did an excellent uh, comparison between these different tools. And uh, I use Cutter and I use Ghidra, as you of course know from my videos, if you've watched any of mine before. Um, I didn't, uh, haven't tried Binary Ninja up until now, and uh, I, I don't know, I don't really use Ida Free. I just uh, stick with Ghidra. So I just wanted to add a little bit uh, to his video as uh, I've been using this tool for quite a while now and uh, I got a couple of things that I thought I could show you to uh, make your reversing easier. So um, I have Ghidra here, this is just the main window and uh, I have this binary which is called 00. zero. I coded this, it's just a uh, Linux uh, executable, uh, so an ELF 64-bit and uh, I'm just gonna click on the analysis button here let this uh, analyze real quick and um, if we now come in here you can see that uh, there are our functions uh, there's a main function this main just calls uh, the Mersenne twister and uh, the Mersenne twister is just a pseudo random number generator okay so I don't wanna even look into this uh, it's just code copied from the internet I want to look into uh, something else and uh, that is the graph view so the the setup that uh, that Karsten had in his video it was looked like this uh, he had the, the decompiler on the right side and uh, the listing view on the left but in Ghidra there's also a graph mode so if you come up here you can see this uh, little this little icon here with uh, what looks like a tree, like a graph already. So it says display function graph. And if you click on that, I have mine integrated uh, here into the uh, into the main uh, the main panel. You get a graph view of the function that you're currently examining. So uh, what you can do is you can take this and just drag it over here, and uh, you can see these uh, three little boxes here. And uh, I'm still holding the mouse button, so if I just let go, it'll drop the graph view in here. And you can do the same with the decompiler view, and then you get them stacked up, and you have them, all three of them, the listing view, the graph view, and the decompiler here in the bottom. Of course, you can also take the decompiler, move that out, over to the right. You can see the little arrow here, it's over here, and then just drop this here, and then you can have the graph view next to the decompiler. Now I usually work uh, with the decompiler in my videos because it's more accessible. Um, when I'm not doing videos I actually work with the graph view. I just uh, I like the graph view, I think it's great so uh, that's what I mostly use. And there are a couple of things that, uh, that I have to say here. Um, because the graph view, um, it's it's not as nice as it is in IDA, but uh, per default, with the default settings, it, it looks even worse. So, what you want to do is you want to come up here, and there's a little logo here. You can see uh, it's like like bricks. It looks like bricks to me uh, with these just these squares on top of each other. And if we open that up. Um, we get something called edit code layout. So in this edit code layout, what you can do is you can move all of these here. And for instance, you can, uh, if you look over here on the left, you could just change 
like the label, the mnemonic, you can give it more room. And if you say OK now, you can see that this is uh, the width increased, right? So between the, the mnemonics and uh, just the operands here. And what I always do is I like to I like to throw in this uh, pre-comment field. And to do that, you just right-click here, you say Add Field, and then you do uh, like the pre-comment. I always add this pre-comment field uh, because I like to do a lot of comments in my code. Uh, in, in the graph view and uh, with this pre-comment it'll show the comments. If this is not here it won't show the comments in the graph view. So um, here you can just say pretty much uh, you can determine how uh, the width of all of these of these parts here. I like to increase the width of the operands and uh, this here is just a spacer. As you can see this Merzen, uh this label here just moves to the left or right. I usually keep it like this. And then if I want to add a comment, I can do right click uh, and then I just have uh, set pre-comment and then I can say this is a comment and it will show you this in the graph view. Now that's a pretty nice feature. Um, you can also highlight these instructions. You can just highlight something with your mouse, do a right click. You can uh, come down here, say color, set color and let's, for instance, make this one like this, I don't know, this lavender color, say OK, and then uh, this is marked for you. So that is something that I wanted to add here. Now, uh, what was also mentioned in the video was that the key bindings, uh, they're different from uh, from IDA. So uh, I can imagine that that is a little bit of a problem, uh, especially if you want to use like IDA free alongside with the Gitra decompiler. But there is actually a solution, and I have the link here. There is a GitHub repository from uh, Nullteilefrei, it's called in German, and they have a reversing class. And from here, you can just go to the repository. I'll put this link in the description, and here you can see a guider, or I don't know how you pronounce it, I probably really... Uh, really butchered that one, uh, but uh, what this is, is pretty much, it's not pretty much, it's key bindings. It's uh, Ghidra key bindings, which correspond to IDA, so you get the same key bindings with this. To import those, you just uh, download them, like this KB XML file. You go to Edit Tool Options, then you can search for Key down here, and it already says Key Bindings. You click on here, and then you say Import, say continue, import, and you're done. So now we have the uh, the IDA key bindings. They should correspond exactly to uh, to what you get in IDA, so you can get around that problem. So for instance, we have this weird function here. I don't know what this does. We want to give it a new name. Uh, usually in Ghidra, I don't know what the shortcut is, but we have the same as in IDA now, so if I press N, I can rename the function, and I'm just going to call this MW some function and done. Same as for adding comments, uh, in IDA I think it's insert, so if I press insert now it says do you want to insert a pre-comment or an end of line comment, select the pre-comment and I say this is a pre-comment, it's the same as I showed you before and then we have a comment in here. So that's the key bindings. What's also pretty nice is and for that we have to actually close the tool so let's close this. Uh, let's close this. Is another GitHub repository, and that is this one. Um, the author's name is Sakilia, and there is a Ghidra Dark here. Now, it says it works for Ghidra version 9 to 10.1. I don't know if it works for the version that I currently have installed. It's 10.2, I think. Um, but uh, what you get with this repository is pretty much a really nice dark mode. Now there is a uh, like the pseudo dark mode integrated into Ghidra where it just reverses the colors but uh, this color reversing I don't know I, I don't like it. Um, I've used it in the past uh, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's very good and the uh, the white the standard default white backgrounds and whatsoever it's just too hard on the eyes for me so 
I really like this Ghidra Dark. And uh, to install this, you pretty much go ahead and just clone it. I am going to clone it in my tools directory. So we actually have to clone it. Now we have Ghidra Dark. Uh, we come into Ghidra Dark and all we have to do is uh, run this install pi and it says okay we need to specify the Ghidra installation. For me the path is just this one so it's just one directory above and then the current Ghidra version. Let's click install and here we have a problem. Nosage file directory, application properties, okay. So I think, yeah, uh, it was the wrong path, sorry. So this is my installation path. And now if we run this, it just takes a second. And if we open Ghidra now, we should see that uh, we get a dark mode, which is actually usable. So let's open our executable again. And uh, we're currently not in a defined function. So let's jump over to the Mercen Twister function. And as you can see, we now have a pretty usable dark mode. Now, um, what I don't like about this is um, you can see here from uh, from this instruction, jump if less or equal. So this is when the jump is taken. This is when the um, when it is less or equal, the jump is taken and we come down here. And if this uh, is false, then we come here. You can see that uh, the false branch, I'll just call it, is marked red, but this here is blue. I don't like this blue, so what I usually do on a clean install, I just uh, come into the settings, and then there is like the graph view in here, um, and it's this function graph. And here you can see conditional jump, conditional jump highlight, and what I always do is I take this, and then I just uh, set this to green, and this to a lighter green for the highlight. I do the same with the red because uh, yeah, I like to have bright colors here. So uh, let's just, I don't know, select this one maybe. And for the unconditional jump, I usually go with uh, something that's blue. But of course, you can do whatever you want because this is all personal preference. And if we now say OK, then we get nice green edges here. Uh, another thing that I like to do is actually uh, I always like to go a little bit uh, lighter on the background color so I usually choose like I don't know maybe this one and uh, that's too bright okay let's do this one maybe yeah that's better so that's pretty much what I what I usually go with um, you can also change the font if you want also in the settings uh, I also like to do that. Let's just hop over to the decompiler and you can see you've got a nice dark mode. Alright, with this you get Ghidra with key bindings, the same as they are in IDA. I showed you how to get the graph view, how to like stack these or put them next to each other. And uh, you got this nice dark theme here, which is just easier on the eyes. With that being said, I hope you got something from this video. Uh, I hope I can do more stuff in the coming weeks, coming months, you know, uh, be a little bit more active on YouTube. And yeah, that being said, I will see you then. Goodbye.